Hello and welcome. And today we're going to be looking at how to create a very basic glitch effect like the one you're seeing on screen right now using only After Effects and inbuilt tools. So no plugins will be used. So the first thing we're going to need to start doing is going to composition, creating a new composition and we're going to call this glitch. I'm just going to press OK on that. And now we need to start adding our content. So if I go to layer, new, oh, so we go, layer, new, text. I'm just going to use text content, but you can use video or images. This would work exactly the same. So I'm just going to type in some glitch text. And I'm just going to use a line to just center this in the middle of my screen a little bit better. And adjust the size a bit, just so it's a bit easier to see. So with my text now in my composition, I now need to basically go to layer and pre-compose. Because what I'm going to be doing is I want to create, um, be able to edit this later on, but also not have too many layers when it comes to adding some more adjustment layers and effects to it later on. So I'm just going to quickly rename my composition. There you go. And I'm just going to press, I'm just going to call this glitch text comp and press OK. There we go. So what you see now is it's created a composition within a composition. This allows us for to basically be able to ever go back into a composition and edit later on. So I need to now go to effect and channel and add some shift channels. This will split our red, green and blue values for our layer. This means we can basically pull away those colors and reposition them accordingly. So for example, if I turn the green and blue off, you can see just our red value in our video image or text in this case. But for the, I'm just going to turn them all back on quickly for the time being. And what I need to do is I need to actually duplicate this. Uh, so there's three versions of it. So to do that, I just click on the layer and click control D or command D on a Mac. So I've now got three duplicate copies. And what I want to do is I want to make sure the first layer is red only. So I'm going to turn the green and blue off. Second layer, I want to just have the green. So I'm going to turn the red and the blue off. And the last layer, I want to be just blue. So I'm going to turn the red and green off. Now you won't see it doing anything at the moment. That's because all layers are on top of each other and the top layer over at zero two. So I need to have all three layers selected. Go onto our toggle modes and switches. And where it says mode, I need to make sure instead of it saying normal, I need to click the drop down and make it add. So all those three layers will add on top of each other to add the color throughout. So we're getting back to the original white color that we're using here. So at the moment, if I was to press play, nothing would happen. So I need to actually now start adding in some effects. So to do this, I go to layer, new, and I want to create a null object. This null object will contain our expression slider which will be our control mechanism for the other three layers uh, and most of our controls in it. So if I go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control on our null object, this adds us a slider so we can easily control the amount of influence it has. I'm just going to lock my Effect Control Panel so I can easily select it. And then I'm going to go onto one of my text compositions and click the P button, which will bring up our position value. Then using the Option or Alt key, clicking the stopwatch to bring up our expression entry panel. And this is where we're going to add in our little basic expression, which we're going to be using today is wiggle. So we're just going to type in wiggle, open. And then we're going to add in a value, um, let's say 20. This is how many times it will do it per second or per frame. And then comma, and we're going to now want to link this up to our slider. So to do this, we just simply click our little pick quick down here and drag this onto our slider on our null object. And then we want to close our expression off. And then we can just simply click away. 
like so. So if I was to now pull the slider, you'll see our red value can now be moved, uh, adjusted its positioning, which in itself could create some quite cool effects if you uh, desire that to be so. And if I press play, you see it just jiggles around because of the wiggle value with the amount of it being controlled by the slider. But I want this on the other two layers as well. So to do this easily, I just simply click on our position value like so. I go up to our edit, copy expression only, and then select our two other layers. Press P, click our two position values and just press Control V or Command V to paste in our expression. This means we don't have to type it in three times. We can just simply type it in once and copy it across to our other layers. So now if we was to click away and press space to, or play, you'll notice that now all three values are being wiggled independently, which are giving us this sort of glitchy, very modernist, clean look. And again, because it's a stopwatch, we can go onto our null object and we can actually start keyframing this. So I go to start at nothing, move our timeline to about two seconds. And I'm just going to click the drop down here so I can add another keyframe in. And I'm just going to click to add a keyframe at this current time, then move it along a bit and bring our slider value back to zero, like so. This will mean we can basically have it do nothing then bring in our animation and then fade out. So we can control when our glitch occurs within our timeline, which is super important. So now we need to actually start making this look a bit more distorted. So to do that, I just simply need to, uh, let me just check a few things, there we go. So if I go to layer, new adjustment layer, and this will basically control all of our layers below it. And I go, and now I want to add some distortion. So to do this, I go to Effect, Distort, and I want to add a Wave Warp in. So as you see, that's not quite desirable what we want at the moment. So we need to change its white wave type. And we want to change this to Noise. We're going to change our direction to zero, so it's on the horizontal axis. Again, if you want a vertical, you do it to 90, but I want uh, horizontal because it just works for what I'm doing. And I want to change my wave width. So if you see if I play it like that, it's not quite extreme enough for what I'm wanting. So actually I'm going to go and change my wave width value and width height value. So I'm changing my width to, uh, I think about probably about 4,000 because I want it to be quite extreme, but not too extreme in a sense. So if I press space now, you see we're getting this kind of semi-black mirror kind of effect. Uh, but I also want it to have a bit of randomness to it. So to do that, I just want to sort of adjust our wave height. So I'm just going to click on the stopwatch again with Alt click or Option click on our height. And I want to link this to the null object slider like we did before. So this bring, now you'll notice we've brought up the wave height expression. So again, I'm typing in wiggle and I'm going to put 10 this time and I'm going to pick wick and I'm going to link this back to my slider control on my null object. I'm just going to make sure I've closed that expression off. Like so, and then click off. Now if I press play, we should start getting a bit of a randomness to the distortion. It's still quite clean and it's a bit not broken up quite enough yet. So we're going to have to do a few more bits and bobs to this yet. It's going to close our effect control panels for a second. And we're also going to show you, we're just going to increase the extremeness of our slider values a bit to make the effect a bit more hit you in the face in a sense. So with our adjustment layer, I want to duplicate this so I can uh, repeat the effect and have uh, more control of how many breaks up it has. So I select the layer and press Control D or Command D. It duplicates our layer and our effects applied to it. But I want to now uh, adjust the wave width on this second copy 
to be half roughly of what our previous one was. So I'm going to type in wave width 2000. So this means we'll get some big chunks and some smaller chunks essentially, which will give us a bit more of a, uh, a, a kind of interesting breakup. Now I'm just going to preview to make sure it's all right. Looking about the way I want it to, um, but it's still looking a little bit too clean for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to layer. New. And I'm going to add another adjustment layer, but this time I'm going to add some noise. So I'll go to effect. I want to go to noise and grain. Oop, my mouse is a little bit uh, misbehaving at the moment. There we go. Oop. There we go. And I want to go to noise and I want to increase our amount of noise to about, let me just think about this, about 25-ish, maybe 35. Yeah, like so. So this will create a bit of um, old CRT style kind of um, imperfections to our screen. Because what we're trying to go for here is a uh, old TV style look without using the TV effect. I'm going to now add another layer. I'm going to add a solid because I actually want it to look a bit more Venetian blindy, a bit more old school TV CRT imperfection. So I'm going to add a new solid layer and I'm going to make it black. Don't worry if you can't see everything below it yet because we're going to be seeing that in a moment. So what I'm going to do now is I go to Effect and I want to go to Transition and I want to add some Venetian blinds. So I'll just add them in like so. Now again, we can't see anything quite yet. So I'm just going to bring up our transition completion to about 95, 92-ish percent. I'm going to change our angle to be 90, so it's on the horizontal axis. I'm going to change my width to be a bit smaller, so the lines are closer together. So about 5 will do. And as you see, this is now giving us a more CRT-style look to our text. Uh, what I also did, you may notice, is I clicked on the little T in our layers, which basically um, means that that uh, transparency is retained from the layers below, but it wouldn't affect um, anything that's not below it in a sense. It, it, it makes sense. It keeps the transparency basically. That's all you need to know for the time being. So the reason I've created pre-compositions is it means I can just double click on my composition layer. So for example, if I double click on this glitch text comp layer, it brings back our, stand, our text that we created at the beginning. And what I can do now is I can have our text change from one piece of text to another. So if I drag back my timeline to somewhere where the, the glitch is at the most extreme, um, just so we've got the kind of rough timing because we can't see the effects in our original pre-composition. And what I want to do is with our glitch text selected and our time position at where we want the cut to happen, I'm going to go to Edit split layer and this now splits our layer into two as you can see this means i can now go onto my second glitch text which is about on this one here i can simply double click on my text and change it to be something else so let's just type something else in so it's changed just to show it's changed i'm going to realign that to the center and then I'm going to go back to my effect composition. So if I press space now, you'll see it changes from glitch text to it's changed. And with the distortion being quite extreme in the middle, the transition isn't as hit you in the face as it could be, which means it's a lot more smooth of a transition than just a direct cut, which is what it is, but it's masked by the distortion. I'm just going to bring an image in and we're just going to do a bit of um, tweaking to our effect here. 
just to show you how you can build up uh, your composition and how you can start to create some quite nifty branding logos or you could also do this with uh, video to transition from one piece of video to another, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to fast forward for now. And you'll start to see, and you'll see our final result in a moment. So now if we go back onto our composition and press play, we should be able to see our finished glitch effect image slash text. Now again, you can tweak this as much as you want. We can just simply adjust our keyframes and you can work this with other effects. And it works really well with video and photos, for example. I'm not gonna show you them today, but the same principles apply. You basically want to create a pre-composition and use adjustment layers and a null object as your control system. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.